We are called to love everybody, to let them come as they are. Let God work on the heart. Because in Romans, it says that God gave up their heart to their darkest desires. Okay, well, if God is pulling that darkened heart into church, that means God is beginning to work on it. That means God is beginning to kind of pull away the, the outside layer. Kind of like, you know... <clears throat> Or the idea of the onion, you peeling away the layers of the onion. God is beginning to peel away those layers, and he is getting to that core, and God is going to use, you know, God is going to go into the heart. He is going to break that heart. And he is going to rebuild it. If, and this is a big if, if God begins to pull away those layers, yeah, I, I, I am still being peeled like an onion, trust me. Um, but if God is being beginning to peel back those layers, those people come into church, and then all of a sudden they're being attacked by bigotry and hatred and you know that kind of stuff, they're not going to come back. And all of a sudden we have lost a chance to reconcile a soul back to God. Verse of the day today is, again, that is exclamation point VOD in the chat. Um, it is Mark 1230. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So what does that mean? Where does that come from? Let's open it up and look at it in context. So we can see where in the Bible and where in the scripture it is coming from. But before we get in that, I definitely want to get, you know, I want to say a prayer. Um, and I'm really trying to get into the habit of this uh, before we actually get into. Um, I got a question about church whenever you can after the verse, if you want to. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons is you know, to talk and, um, and talk about the faith so on and so forth and you don't necessarily have to believe what we believe um, but I welcome the opportunity to share the faith am I going to be able to am I going to be able to say that I'm going to have all the answers absolutely not um, in fact I I probably have more questions than you know a lot of other people uh, mainly because of this verse and we'll get into that all right but I'm going to say a quick prayer uh, and then we'll open it up and look at uh, look at the verse in context. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you use me as a way to speak to others again today. Um, Father God, I pray that I pray that you anoint my tongue, that you use your Spirit to divinely inspire the words that are coming from my mouth. Father God, I pray that I, the, the message that I give today is able to help others with any kind of doubt, any kind of um, misconception or anything like that, that they may have. Father God, I pray for anybody in church, or anybody in church, I pray for anybody in chat that is having any kind of doubt, any kind of depression, you know, any kind of anxiety. Father God, I pray that because I know that on a personal level. I've dealt with that in so, so, so many ways. And I know that when I'm dealing with my own doubt, when I'm dealing with my own anxiety, when I'm dealing with my own stress and depression, that I can come to you and I can lament and I can tell you my problems, Father. And you come down and you comfort me and you strengthen me. I thank you for that. I'm not worthy of the gift that you've given me through grace. But I know that you freely give it. And Father God, if there be anybody in chat, anybody who's listening to the, the upload of the verse of the day on YouTube, 
Father God, if they're suffering from any kind of ailment, any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, Father God, I pray that if they stand here praying with me in faith, that they are healed. Because I do believe in that faith healing, Lord. You never once said that miracles are going to cease. Father God, I stand on the promises that you give me in the Bible. In Isaiah, you say by in Isaiah, you said, by his stripes we are healed. We stand on that promise. We stand on the promise that we will have a we will have a good life. Not necessarily a rich or abundant life, but we will have a good life. And I stand on the promise, Lord, the promise that you give us and the peace that passes all understanding. I pray that you give each one that is listening or anybody that my voice is touching, God, I pray that you are able to give them that. I thank you for your ever, everlasting glory. your unfailing love and your great mercy. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Stealing from Pastor Deuce here, I can't not I can't see that you're praying with me, but I trust that you are. Marcion of Sinope. Hello, how are you doing? All right, jump in and look at this uh, in context. <clears throat> so in context, um, Mark 1230 actually falls in where Jesus says, need a beard to pull this off. Unfortunately, pineapple, I work in the, um, unfortunately, I work in the restaurant industry, so this right here is about as much as I can do. Um, if I go any further, uh, if I let it get any uh, any better <clears throat> or any bigger, would, I mean, I'd love to, because I used to have the, the full chin strap going on, um, but because of the restaurant industry, if I go any further than this, uh, got to do a beard net and everything else and those are just a pain so i just kind of leave it with a little goatee here um but i do like that saying is you know i can't see that you're praying with me but in faith i want to hope that you are uh marcion says doing well thank you i hope you're having a good day hello to you too miss jellybean <clears throat> that i'm glad to hear that you're doing well i'm having a pretty good day today um, jumping into the verse of the day here and then uh, we're going to be doing some uh, vintage story a vintage story is a minecraft like sandbox um, however it's not it's not as simple as minecraft is the best way to put it all right so jump into the verse of the day and then we can oh hey thanks for that follow i appreciate that that is awesome um unfortunately the all alerts are turned off during the verse of the day, um, so you don't get the the follow. Um, it, it's Go Ninja Go from the old uh, old Teenage Mutant Ninja. And hey, thank thanks again for that follow, uh, Kettleba Pa. Appreciate it, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, it falls into what is labeled the greatest commandment. All right. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all of the commandments, which is the most important? Now, this is, he's a teacher of the old law. So we're looking at, uh, he's asking about the old covenant, the Ten Commandments. Um, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus thinks for a second. He says, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all your mind, and with all your strength. That is a verse of the day. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. So what does that mean? Okay. And that it's really important to look at that. Is what does that mean? First off, there's a lot of people that you will hear that will say that um, coming to Christ is a spiritual issue. It is an issue of the heart. Yes, I completely agree. Okay? Train. Go figure. As soon as we get into the discussion, we get that train. So, the people will say that coming to Christ is a matter of the heart. Who asked you? Okay, it's a little bit better. So, the idea is coming to Christ is a matter of the heart. Yes, that is true. Um, and the idea that uh, we have to be called um, in the idea that um, there has to be our heart has to be prepared to receive the word of God that is 100% true okay the heart is what begins the transformation if you will okay <clears throat> with all your soul your soul is the um, it's the like backbone okay of everything else um, your soul is the spiritual portion of you all right so love the God with all of your heart open up your heart so that you can receive the Word of God that you understand the gospel you understand the mercy that it uh, it proclaims all of your soul so the spiritual side of you you know, give the spiritual side of you, of you up, um, and try not to resist or rebel. And sometimes it's really, really hard. You know, we are we are creatures of flesh. You know, um, after the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, "For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak." You know, so we kind of have to go on that spirit, and we have to depend on that spirit to help us. And here's the next one is kind of where. I come in, you know, I, I kind of gravitate to. It's to love the Lord your God with all of your mind. And sometimes, in my opinion, okay, and this is only an opinion, but a lot of times it almost seems like we completely throw the mind out of the equation. You know, we use excuse, excuses like, well, it's hard to understand the mind of God and it's hard to understand, you know, where God is coming from. <clears throat> but you got to focus on the mind. Because where are you going to put your faith? Where are you going to have faith in seasons of doubt? Okay? If you're not focusing and if you're not loving the God with all of your mind trying to understand the gospel trying to understand apologetics trying to find you know the ways to defend the faith then when you come into those seasons of doubt when you come into those seasons of storms and tribulation then it's very easy to end up falling away So you have to have the mind in there. You have to, you know, you have to kind of look into like different commentaries and different uh, ways and you know, different things of apologetics. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and I've just finished this, I kind of want to go over it on a stream, um, is C.S. Lewis and Mere Christianity. And I don't know if my, um, I don't know if that's mirrored. I don't know if that's backwards to you guys. But uh, this is an awesome read absolutely awesome um it goes it really goes along with like uh where we are in today because you know especially with the war on ukraine because this was wrote during world war ii and we can use some of the the examples that lewis uses in here versus you know with the nazis um we can use those as a way to kind of build on um the war in Ukraine, how Russia is dealing with Ukraine. 
So highly recommended that uh, if you have not read if you have not read it, pick it up. Um, I got my copy on Amazon for a couple of bucks. So you have to have that apologetic essence to be able to defend the faith. And even in those series of those periods of doubt, you have something to fall back on. And finally, love the Lord your God with all of your strength. Even in those periods of doubt, even in those periods of tribulation, you know, you have to use every ounce of spiritual strength that you have to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. And that can be hard in itself. But as Paul said, I've fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. And that that is what is going to ultimately get us into that door you know get us into that gate and by doing that fighting that good fight keeping the faith finally finishing the race however long we are on this earth you know however long that god is going to put us here that we are fighting the fight of faith every day with all of the spiritual and even physical strength if we you know if it requires that we can muster that is the way that when we get into those you know, get into that gate we are going to hear well done my good and faithful servant the second greatest command is love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than these Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You might be thinking, well, who is my neighbor? The answer to that, everyone. Everyone on the face of this earth is your neighbor. We are sharing this world together. There is no commandment. No commandment greater than these. And the reason being is if you take the Ten Commandments and break them down, it is simply love God, love people. Because you have four commandments that are focused on God. All right. Um, let me. I, I don't have them committed to memory. I do, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, Ten commandments. The four for God is the first four. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay. Number one. Love God. Number two, you shall not make idols. All right? So that's not, uh, don't have an engraven image that goes before God. Okay? Again, love God. Three, you shall not take the, Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Okay? Don't take God's name in vain. That is an, um, a, a form of respect. Okay? But again, love God. Number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. There's a bit of speculation on this, you know, some kind of debate, uh, and that kind of comes from my own background. But remember the day that God said keep holy, okay? If you can't necessarily do that day, then pick one day. Any one day, keep it holy. Focus on God. But again, it boils down to that first and greatest commandment, love God. Right, as long as you keep one day holy. I, I agree, Mr. Uh, I agree, Jelly. Then we get into five. All right. Honor your father and your mother. Love people. You shall not murder. 
love people. You shall not commit adultery. Love people. And this is specifically your spouse, so, you know, you, you should really go and, you know, respect your spouse. You shall not steal. And because the person that you're stealing from, they ended up paying money for that. And then by taking away from them, you're you're not necessarily showing them love. So, again, love people. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. All right, well, don't lie against your neighbor. Don't, you know, say that they're doing this or say that they're doing that. Again, it boils down to that second one, love people. We just had a train. Okay. <laughs> So bear fault with it to get yourself. Don't talk bad about your neighbor. Don't say that your neighbor is doing this, doing that. Again, boils down to love people. And finally, the tenth command: you shall not covet. Don't don't be jealous about what your neighbor has. All right. Don't be jealous about what your neighbor is a, you know is able to do. Don't covet their position. Don't covet their things. Show them love. So it boils down to love people. So all of the Ten Commandments can be focused into those two things. Love God and love people. That is why that is the greatest, you know, these are the two greatest commandments. Because you can take the entirety of the Ten Commandment and compress them into these two different things. Need a command? Chad has heard train whistle. <laughs> that would actually be a good idea. Um, I need to set that up. Okay. So jump into this. So the, the teacher of the law then responds to him. Well said, teacher. The man replies. You were right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and all your understanding and all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all of the burnt offerings, all of the sacrifices. Uh, well, thanks for dropping in and saying, hey, why was I appreciate it? You know, just just that much. It means a lot. <clears throat> yeah have have a great day and i hope everything goes great for you <clears throat> okay so you are right in saying that god is one and there is no other but him to love him with all of your heart all of your understanding and all of your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all of the burnt offerings and all of the sacrifices so what he's saying is you now this is a teacher of the old law following these two commandments okay it is more important than as many burnt offerings as you could possibly think of all of the sacrifices you could possibly think of it's following these two commands is more important than all of that finally when jesus saw that he had answered wisely he said to him you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. So by understanding, okay, understanding that these two commandments are more important than everything else in the old law. Okay. This teacher was told that he wasn't far from the kingdom of God. And that's that's what we're ultimately doing, is building up the kingdom. So, what are we, what are we required to do in building up that kingdom? And how are we supposed to do, you know, show that Christian life? 
we have our answer right here of the greatest commandment love God and love people you know and there are certain issues that you know, we won't get out, go into that many many Christians today struggle with sometimes they would even say that they they deal with hatred and you know that kind of thing they're not showing that love of God they're not loving people the way they are called to do in doing that in throwing stones out of hatred and anger and bigotry the only thing we are doing is estranging those people even more we are called to love everybody to let them come as they are let God work on the heart because in Romans it says that God gave up their heart to their darkest desires okay well if God is pulling that darkened heart into church that means God is beginning to work on it that means God is beginning to kind of pull away the the outside layer kind of like you know <clears throat> Or the idea of the onion you peeling away the layers of the onion God is beginning to peel away those layers and he is getting to that core and God is going to use you know God is going to go into the heart he is going to break that heart and he is going to rebuild it if and this is a big if if God begins to pull away those layers yeah I I I am still being peeled like an onion trust me um, but if God is being beginning to peel back those layers those people come into church and then all of a sudden they're being attacked by bigotry and hatred and you know that kind of stuff they're not going to come back and all of a sudden we have lost a chance to reconcile a soul back to God And in losing that chance to reconcile that soul, we're losing a chance to get another testimony. Because every single one of us are going through messes. And at the end of every mess, or you can't go, you can't have a message without a mess. And maybe this is something either like something totally different you know I can say that back in my younger days I was this this and this all right and I've gone through messes back in my younger days well you take a mess and add on age and you have a message so in my in my older age and I'm not old by any means but in my yeah with age comes wisdom and with that wisdom I can speak about how everything that I have gone through has led up to him and it's given me the ability to speak about the things that I have dealt with and how God has helped me every single day I think this is a pretty good place to end the verse of the day so I'm gonna close it I'm gonna go into prayer um, I'm gonna close the verse of the day in prayer and then uh, kettlebell Paul said something about asking about church so you know if there's any kind of uh, discussion afterwards we'll go into just chatting and have some discussion dear heavenly father thank you for your message thank you for your word we thank you for your son that you've given and john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life father god we thank you for that gift of mercy that gift of love that we did not deserve in any way shape or form Yet you gave it freely. 
You sent your son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Father God, I just pray that everyone here, everyone that sits and listens to this message, they'll remember to focus all the aspects of themselves, the heart, the soul, and the mind. Just as you are threefold in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we are threefold as well in the heart the soul and the mind and we need to give every single ounce every single piece of our heart our mind and our soul to you it is only through that that we are able to keep the faith even in times of trouble even in times of hardship even in times of discouragement father god we thank you for your comfort We thank you for your love. We thank you for the promises of healing that you have given us through the Bible. And once again, Father, I say that if anybody is going through mental anguish, I pray that you comfort them. If anybody is going through physical anguish, I pray that you heal them. And if anybody is going through spiritual anguish, Father, I pray that you love them. You already love yeah, that, that's not that's not right. Because you already love them. Father God, I pray that you show them that love. The 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 darkened heart and the you know the rebellion, everything else. And Father God, I pray that you just if it if it takes that if it needs to be that way, Father God, I pray that you break that heart so that you can begin rebuilding it up to let them know that they are loved. They're loved so intently that you know the amount of hairs on their head. To think that you care about me that much humbles me. And I pray that it would humble anybody else that is listening to this. I thank you. I pray. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm just a dreamer, a streamer. I stream my life away. Your higher power may not be God or Jesus Christ I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree Without each other's help there ain't no hope for us Why can't we just not be enemies? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Say I'm a dreamer Dreaming of better days You might say I'm a streamer Streaming my life away But I'm not the only one